Hello. Pronunciation in English is quite a difficult thing because English has 26 letters, but more than 44 sounds. So pronunciation in English, not a question of a one-to-one -one mapping of a letter to a sound. Of course, some English words are pronounced exactly the way they are spelled, but others are not because of this phenomenon of English having more sounds than the letters. So we're going to see today some basics about pronunciation in English and learn some uh, basic tactics about how we can identify uh, words when they are transcribed, the symbols using the dictionaries and what sounds they stand for so that we can learn our pronunciation and be able to communicate effectively when we use English. So we're going to begin right away with the vowel sounds. Uh, these ones, we're going to see how they are transcribed and how we can pronounce them exactly. So the first vowel sound is the vowel I. I, as we can see from the words pick, tick, silk, bill, him, bed, kit. In the pronunciation of these words, you can feel that the vowel is quite very short. I, pick, not peak or teak or silk or beel, pick, tick. So that is one of the vowel sounds, I. Then we have another vowel which is pronounced E. It looks just like the letter E, just like the vowel, the first one looked like the letter I without a dot. So E, as in the word dress, bed, tell, spell, bet, set, get, net. In fact, these words are spelled almost the same way they sound. So E. Eh, there's a vowel sound. If you see a sound, a, a letter E with two um, diagonal um, lines, you can tell that that is the way the sound E eh is transcribed. So if you see that in a dictionary against the word, pronounce it E. Eh. And then we have an interesting one, A. Ah, ah. Take note that it is pronounced A ah in the word trap. It is not A. Ah trap, man, not man, bad, not bad, sat, not sat, slap, not slap, bat, not bat, tap, pat. So that sound is eh, it looks like a combination of A and E. So in the word trap or man. Another vowel sound is very closely related to the one before, ah, as in the word strut, bab, love, cut, but, stuck, crush. You can tell the duration in, in terms of time in producing this sound is very short, ah. So strut, bab, love, cut, but, stuck, crush. And then we have another one, which is the short o. Oh, looks like an all closed or an, an almost an upside down A or something like that. So in the words got, spot, lot, odd, wash, not, toss. These words contain this sound, oh, short in, in duration. Then we have this one, ooh, ooh, ooh. It is not ooh, but ooh, as in the word foot not foot, foot, good, put, not put, pull, not pull, push, not push, took, not took. So, ooh, foot, good, put, pull, push, took. These are interesting uh, sounds. Of course, if we pronounce them in isolation, they come with some exaggeration. But definitely, we, we wouldn't be that exact uh, if we speak, because if you overemphasize the correctness of sounds in, in, in pronunciation, even as you speak rapidly, you sound very artificial. So we are exaggerating the, the exact sounds because that is the way they are pronounced in isolation. So the duration of even the sound can be determined by the word you, pro you, you pronounce and also according to the speech style, but you will be understood. 
Then we have this interesting one, which is pronounced uh. Take note, it, is, it comes down, uh, as in the word again, uh, again, not again, again. Then in the word common, take note, it's not common. That part has that sound, uh, common. Then we have accept, the part uh, is that sound. Then we have the word comma, comma, not comma. So comma. Then we have doctor, doctor, doctor or teacher, master. All these ones have the sound uh. So take note. Then we have uh, in speech, these same vowels, some of them are quite longer in, in, in terms of time if, if measured in speech. So you have this one, e as in the word key, take note, of course, different from tick, short e. And then over here, e as in key, feel, speak, beef, neat, teach, lean. These are all words that we can find a vowel long e in it. And long e is captured with an i with two, like a colon in, in the uh, slashes. Then we have ah, uh, ah, uh, that's a long one. Ah, uh, as in spark, car, dark, far, bark, park. So then we have the long or as in all, as in the words sort, bought, call, and source. We are emphasizing the duration because these words are pronounced in isolation. It does not mean that if you speak rapidly, you have to take your time to make it long to sound enough. To, but in duration, no matter uh, the, how fast an individual speaks, even if these sounds are measured, uh, a long E would be longer than a short one. So do not worry. Just take note that in the words, like the word key, the word feel, another word is feel, F-I-L-L. Feel, feel, these are two different words. Pronounced in isolation, you can easily tell that feel is F-E-E-L, feel is F-I-L-L. -L. Then we have oo, different from oo, 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 as in pool, crew. Let's take note, that word is not crew, but crew, through, blue, that word is also not blue, but blue. So pronounce the same, same way the letter blue is pronounced. Blue. And then flu, the past tense of fly, is also not flu, but flu. Pronounce the same, the same way as a short form of influenza, flu. So oo, pool, crew, through, blue, flu. So the birds flew yesterday. The past tense of fly is flu. And then we have uh, 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 as in fur, church, shirt, girl, curse. Let's take note that likely in West Africa, uh, fur can be pronounced fair, but it's actually fur. Church, usually pronounced by people as church. And then shirt, likely pronounced shet. Girl, likely pronounced girl. And then curse, likely pronounced curse. The actual pronunciation, particularly British English, is curse, girl, shirt, church, fur. Then we have diphthongs, which are uh, the combination of two different vowel sounds brought together as one. So you glide from one of the vowel sounds smoothly into another. So we can see the first one is the combination of a and e and they become a, as in the word say, bake, fail, bail, snail. And then we have a and e as in I, sight, night, bike, nice, spike, child. And then we have oi, as in oil, foil, boy, boil, choice, noise, spoil. And then we have o. American English, you go for O, O, British English, low, no, show, throw, snow, 
So, O. Oh. And then we have ear, e -e, as in ear, the word fear, near, mere, here, spear, cheers. And then we have ow, as in now, and the word kowtow, usually pronounced in West Africa as koto, but that word actually is kowtow. Then we have downtown, snout, sprout, all these, you can find the sound, the diphthong ow in them. And then we have eh, 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 so there. Fair, pear, bear. And then we have ua, ua, as in the word poor, poor. Sometimes poor can be pronounced poor. It's also pronounced poor. And we also have sure. Are you sure? Yes, I'm very sure. Of course, in usual rapid speech, you're not going to be hyper-correct, trying to sound exactly, to articulate everything uh, exactly. You may sound too artificial, so you wouldn't say, are you sure? Are you sure? You know, it comes naturally if, if we practice. Then we have consonant sounds, very easy. Some of the consonant sounds, just like the vowel sounds, um, the, 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 the symbols are just similar to the letters, others not. So, for example, p, p it has is the p, p, the sound p is represented by the letter p in the slashes. So we have p, pen, pan, peel. We have b, bell, ball, bat. We have m, mm, man, match, most. We have w, w used to stand for the sound w. So weak, when, wow. Trying to go a little faster on these one because they are very direct and easy to understand. Then we have um, f, so the F sound, f, flash, fake, f, v, van, vest, vanilla. Then we come to the, f, this one is not a letter. So that is the symbol for the sound f, as in thing, with, thick, usually produced with the, 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 the tongue coming slightly between the upper teeth and the lower one. So, f, but, so thin, with, thick. Then if you come down to the other one, then it's pronounced v. The only difference between th and v is that if you put your hand on your throat, you can feel when you make the sound, you feel absolutely nothing. But if you make the sound, v, you feel there's a vibration. So what it means is that a sound doesn't produce a voice. So it is called voiceless. Then v makes some voice or vibration, so it is voiced. So the, then, there, they are all from the sound of v, while thin, with, thick, are from the sound. The only difference has to do with either there's a vibration or not, also usually called voicing. Then we have uh, t, from which you have take, ten, tan, d from which you have desk, Dan, no, Dad, Daniel, S, from which you have cell, spell, snake, Z, from which you have Zani, Z, zero. And then we have N, represented by N, from which we have new name, narrow, and many other words that have the sound N, L, L, from learn. Then we have learn, laptop, lad, R, as in read, ran, ram, and then interestingly, the sound Y is not represented by the letter Y, but by the letter J in the slashes. So yes, yearn, yesterday. Then we have uh, the sound SH represented by like a long S or a stretched S. So that is shock, shell, shall. Then we have the sound J like a, a pulled out Z or Z. Then we have vision, decision, then we have the sound ch, a combination of t and the sh sound. Church, check, challenge. And then we have j, d, and then the sound for j, so judge, nudge, june. Then we have a k, for example, kettle, 
kit, cat, and we have go, gan, gate, grow, mm, as in the words sing, lang, lang, and then we have slang, then we have uh, as in the word ho, help, ask. Now we're going to move on to another interesting part of our discussion, which is even something we may not know, or we, we might have taken for granted. That is a particular way that the, the plural marker S and the third person singular marker S, there's a particular way uh, it is pronounced. So let's take this example or this exercise. How do you pronounce the final S in these words? Word number one, as you can see, number two, number three, and number four. How do you pronounce the final S in these words? Now take note. Interestingly, the final S in the word works is pronounced so works, works. The final S in the word props is pronounced s, so props, props. But the final word S, letter S in the word bag is not pronounced s, actually. It is pronounced g. It is pronounced z, forgive me. It's pronounced z, so bags, bags. Of course, because we are learning this, we are trying to be a little exaggerative. That's why we're saying bags. But of course, you would not speak in everyday life and say, uh, give me those bags. No, but it, it comes naturally, give me those bags. So the final s in thieves is also z. So thieves. What account for the, pronoun the different pronunciations of the final s in these words? Let's see. So... The letter S at the end of word is pronounced either S or Z. The first rule is if the letter S follows a voiceless sound, it is pronounced S. The voiceless sound that comes immediately before that sound. Remember, we're not talking about the letter. Of course, sometimes the letter may have the exact sound that it stands for. So you take note of the sound that comes immediately before the S. If that sound is voiceless, how do you know that sound is voiceless? As we did, you place your hand in your throat or your voice box and make that sound like the sound s itself. You feel nothing. But you make the sound s, you can feel some vibration. If you feel nothing, that sound is voiceless. If you feel some vibration, the sound is voiced. So as long as the sound that comes before the final s is voiceless, the s is pronounced s. If it is voiced, as the second rule shows, the s is pronounced z. Let's take some exercise. So the word comes. The sound that comes before the S in number one is mm. Remember, not the E because either that E doesn't is not pronounced. So mm, you put your hand on your throat. Mm, it's vibrating. So comes. Then you have arrives. Arrives. V. Okay, arrives. So it is z. speaks. You feel no vibration, so speaks. It is s. Then you come to pants. T, 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 s, t. So pants. Then you come to l. That's a vibration. So kills. Then you come to o. Another vibration. Number six. Girls. Then d. D. Vibration. Spreads. B. B. Vibration. Bribes. Oi. E. 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 Vibration. Boys. As a number 10, proofs, you don't feel anything, so proofs. So the final sound determines whether the S will be pronounced S or Z. We've seen that if it is voiceless, the S is pronounced S. If it is voiced, it is pronounced Z. Apart from these, we also have the pronunciation of usually the verb, the past tense of the verb uh, D or the ED that is put at the end of regular verbs how uh, is that past tense marker pro pronounced? So take note of these words, number one, number two, number three. How do you pronounce the ED or the D at the end of these verbs? Now the answer, number one will be pronounced D, build. Number two will be pronounced T, watched, watched, not watched. The number three will be pronounced it as in wanted, wanted, wanted. Why? 
the rules. Number one, if the verb base ends in a voiceless sound, then the ed ends something like t. We know what a voiceless sound is now. So if the sound that comes immediately before the ed is uh, voiceless, then that ed or the d will be pronounced t. Then the second rule, if the verb base ends in a voiced sound, then the ed ending sounds like d. So voice d, voiceless t. And then the final one, if the verb base ends in a t or a d sound already, then the ed ending sounds like it or it, as in wanted or greeted. So these are the rules. Let's take some exercise to see. Now these words, worked. So k, so it will be t, k is voiceless. Dropped, p is voiceless, so dropped. Finished, sh is voiceless, so finished. Divorce, divorced. Stopped, laughed, coughed, watched. Oh, these sounds that come before the ed are voiceless. So the ed sounds like the letter t, t. So worked, dropped, finished, divorced, that way. And then we have these ones, moved. So v, returned, stayed. Every vowel is, uh, is voice, so stayed. But then we have what? D studied as we learn, studied, you can't say stud, studied, because a sound end with already a D or a D. So studied, married, widowed, raised, engaged, traveled. Then we have started, because it ends with a T sound, graduated, because it ends with a T sound, visited, separated, dated, attended. If we continue practicing with all these words, uh, you'll be able to master pronunciation and your English will become clearer and clearer and your conversations will be beautiful to listen to. Keep practicing.